turn really the water really on? Right? I think so. You don't want to say anything? You I'm just... not going to waste coffee for this. Well, I mean, yeah. we just like went live like, right away, so. Okay. It says chat enabled, so I should be able to see chat. Is it going to pop up on the thing? Hmm? I'm, I'm, I'm checking it on. It? Yeah, I think this is chat enabled, so I'm assuming chat will start. You're streaming in 720. You want to go ahead and up your uh, stream quality there? No. streaming crap. Why? I don't know how. No one's going to tell the difference. They're all looking on their phone anyway. It's, they can hear you. Okay. I'm not saying anything they don't know. Go to 120. Go to 120? I hear 120 is good. 108? Well, yeah. I hear the lower the number, the better. Streaming settings. Uh, resolution. 1080. By oh, I, I just I just swapped to He's it. He's got checkboxes. I just swapped to it. Swapped. Okay, cool. Can you type in chat? Uh, I'm about to. I'm gonna test it out. One two one two. Cause like it just went straight live. So. It says we're live. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Yo, are you gonna, no you gonna advertise me? Yeah, bro. We just went live, bro. We have a live, but usually people are on the spot. The advertisement. I mean, the uh, <laughs> the email has to go out. And what's up with this place? Leave the department for one day and look what happens. Hey, make sure too. Anyone who walks in here understands that we're streaming. Yeah, I'm gonna say, hey, we're live. So no, there's no company, no company. Oh, safety. you want those little red lights? <laughs> in here? Yeah. This we'll go get the sign that we used to have. Yeah. Oh, do you guys need to make an announcement in the building? I can go hit the old intercom. Seems like the appropriate time. There's four people here. Let's see. Yeah, we're all. Yeah, we're a nice way to count, Justin. Yeah. Four people no, in the room. No, 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 Proud no. of you. I get that now that you have a kid, you gotta start with your basics again. Now that I have a kid. Kid or? Kids. K I D. But I mean, if you wanna do K I D, that works too. Children. You have multiple? No. That's weird. I mean, if you count Michaela, yes. Did you type in chat? I did. Chat didn't show up. Oh. Well, I said it as Gerard. I said it as my personal account, not. Yeah, but it didn't show up on the thing, so you can't respond to it. Quindy, Quindy laughed at us, apparently. Yeah, nothing showed up. Well, this is through Restream, so it's not gonna. That's the so, problem. So this chat to, may not be connected. It says right. chat enabled, so. Courtney, we're going to need you to read the chat questions to, oh to John. No, we'll, we'll, no, we'll just get him a... Um, well, let me go chat settings. Huh? Twitch chat font. Chat font size. Yeah, I, I see you. Yeah, yeah. Just checking that thing. <laughs> now I see a truly citrus squeezed commercial. Nice. Yeah, I got the same <laughs> commercial. It's funny. Yeah, it doesn't have anything. Yeah, that's it. I think it's because it's through Restream. You're not getting their chat server forward. Oh, that's sad. Well, you guys can see me, uh, but I can't see chat unless I go get my laptop. Obviously, from where? From my desk. Or we give you yeah. like we, there's gotta be an there's, there's an iPad or something out there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There should be. Like dozens of them. Yeah. Just gotta make sure they have access to the Wi-Fi. I feel like oh, I'm boy. watching the crappiest TikTok channel ever from Trash Aroma. Oh yeah, it's of course trash. Look, look what came in today. Nice glare, bro. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, the production that. value in this place. Let's see here. Let's find a good one. You're not keeping any of these secrets. No, no, no. Not at the moment. Except for the special one. Except for the special one. Yeah, but the whole. Oh, dude, imagine, it, imagine if we could get foil. Hollow. Yeah. Just take someone and pull it on. It can't be that hard. What about the ones that had like you know those glasses? Get little, the dinosaurs, like the three D, where it was actually hollow, not just. We're we're getting chat set up, so uh, bear with us, right now. Uh, I'm getting ready to go walk on my desk. You got it. If you guys need me for anything, let me know. I will. Thank or you for your help. If you need me for anything, I'll I'll ignore it. But so, okay. today on Reaper Land, uh. We're gonna be building packs for all these cards. See, they come in these little, they're little boxes. So I'm, I gotta put these all in packs for swag boxes and for all the attendees. And later on, we might get to see us building swag boxes. So, not bags. Yeah. So instead of canceling Reaper Land, we uh, decided to just stream us opening. And setting up packs and stuff and swag boxes because so we that, well, at least we have something. I'm assuming the audio is great. I heard it on Justin's phone. It sounded okay. But I'm excited they came in this morning. So right now I'm kind of sorting them all and getting things ready for the swag boxes. Then I'm going to have to take these all home 
and make the starter sets and packs for everybody to hand out at ReaperCon. So, can, like you hand me the, can you hand me the prints? So if chat has any good ideas, I would, a lot of people are telling me to just frame these. I think it'll be cool to have them framed and maybe put outside the studio. So I have, a, I have an uncut sheet of a lot of the cards. I think it'll be fun to actually get this framed and put it outside the studio. Yeah, a lot of good glare. We're in the break room right now, so. Oh, it's probably terrible. It's, it sounded good on your phone, did it not? When you had it playing? I heard when I heard my voice. Um, you just like the sound of your voice. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> it sucks not being able to see chat. No worries, people aren't saying anything. We're in the break room right now, so. Yeah, that sounds great. There we go. Although, actually, because of the charge point on this, eh, that doesn't matter. I do, I do have to plug this in because it's at 40%. So, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> it's, it's, this is working as intended. Hopefully, Ron gets back. Ron went to Alpha Graphics, or his son went to Alpha Graphics. Or they both did. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that needs that is being delivered and <laughs> uh, dropped off. La kind of last minute. We're still waiting on what? Ribbons? I think we're Fact waiting on ribbons. Faction ribbons. Faction poster. Posters. The things where everybody puts all their stickers. Like where you put all your stickers. The cards. Because the dice aren't coming in. Oh, those cards. Yeah. But that's the graphic cards. Uh, crayons? Oh, crayons for all the kids packs. Because yeah. we added a kids pack. A kids, a quid, kids swag bag last night. Last minute edition. Yeah. Do you have your dot? Yep. Um, so. Okay. I can see chat now. Alright, cool. I can see chat now. I feel like there's something else going on, but I don't know. I can't tell you what it is. Is this clit? Am I crazy? Yeah, clits. It's, it's just like blinds. They'll never work when you need them to. <laughs> They'll never do. Let's <laughs> do it this way. Are you sure the chat's working? Mm -hmm. <laughs> People just don't want to talk to me. Yeah, maybe there's nobody here. That's fine. Um, I'm just going to talk to myself. Is that charging now? What? It is charging. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, I have chat now. Oh, Albiva's in. Albiva's in. Uh, Here we go. So Albiva's in. I have an email coming to you and Ashley and uh, Jeff Vatia this weekend, the volunteers that are doing the card game. We're live, We're live by the way. Yeah, oh, okay. So. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no hey, Ron's in the house. <laughs> yeah, but we got to make the meat bags. <laughs> Oh. Slide thing. Oh. Okay. Slide? Uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, middle, okay, mid, like, okay. Well, here, just yours. okay, I may be one. Everyone saw portrait mode and left. Yeah, you're right, Quindy. Wait, I can fix that. I don't know if that's better. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't switch to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll lag behind. There's your, there's your, there's your, there's your, oh, they said much better. Perfect. So, obviously I'm working on a lot of the stuff for ReaperCon. As you guys can see, I'm sure I've been showing these off for years now, but you can see there, there's Karabi. And then here's, I think one of my favorite, this is Turvin. Obviously you guys have seen them, but this is what the cards look like. Briggs. I think this guy's really popular on social media so far. Like on Twitter. This is the Thornforged guy, Barbarian. I think he was really the most... I think he's the best one of them. Uh, the model. The model's really popular. Yeah. It's pretty good. Oh. Is Jacob Jansen's monk in the cards? Um, the, when I pull out some more in a second, I'll find them. Um, if Kerry Michael Cosby's in chat, this is Kerry Michael Cosby's uh, paint job of the um, female minotaur by Jason Weeby. You guys can see there. But yeah. Mm. Well, 
don't, oh, you, I, you're I, don't, looking. I don't see the month. I see Brother Hammond. But Brother that's, Hammond, that's yeah. Not, so that's I, not the right month. Yeah, I tried to get, you know, a good balance of sculptors and stuff and who's, like, you know, I tried to get a bunch of Bobby Jackson, a bunch of Jason Weeby and Kevin Williams. And I tried, I tried to focus on people that are going to be in Artist Alley this year, mm -hmm. Jeff Davis. And I looked at a bunch of the paint jobs, like Rhonda Bender. This is the... 25th anniversary, Terror of the Silent. Gosh, it's bad. Throw me backwards because it's backwards. Uh, that's the Rhonda Bender paint job. Um, but I reached to a, I reached out to a bunch of people in the community as well that I that I see all the time, like Carrie Michael Cosby, and Patrick Chambers, and Jeff Davis. Uh, so I, I tried to 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 get a smattering of a of a good good amount of people. There's Otis the Hobby Pony. Have the Reaper logo forward. Turn them around so they are mystery packs. Uh, so th these these are not going to be packs for uh, giving out at ReaperCon. Those will have stickers and stuff inside of them. These are just for the swag boxes. So I'm, I'm right now I'm making the swag boxes uh, portion of these. I, I know what you're talking about. So you want me to do this like that. So the the card is you can't see what's inside of them, which is fine. I, I will do that for the general, the general packs. We need booster packs. Yeah, that's what I'm making. You'll be able to get booster packs doing all kinds of stuff. So this weekend, I'm going to be making all kinds of booster packs for people to hand out. So if you come and do hobby hijinks, if you uh, go go to the booth and spend, you know, probably forty bucks or more, we'll have a bunch of these um, at the Reaper Bucks store. Things like that, as you do, do things. If you come and take a tour, I'll have some on the tour, so I'll be handing them out to people. There'll, there'll be tons of these floating around. But they also have dungeons on them. So I've, I think I've showed the dungeons off a few times. But I think everything is a little bit, I think things are backwards here. But those are the dungeons and things like that. And those should arrive today. They're coming from a local place here in Denton, so. But yeah. Oh yeah, we started early. How, how early are we? Oh yeah, just a little bit. So, we because there's a lot of work to do. We were building swag boxes all morning. Um, so instead of canceling Reaper land, because uh, we got a lot of stuff to do. Um, I've been waiting for these things to come in. They've been all over the country. They went to Atlanta. They were stuck in California for a long time. Uh, today's basically the last day that they could have arrived <laughs> uh, and been okay. Because now I have the whole weekend to kind of prepare them and get them ready because if they arrived Monday I guess it, I still could have made it work I would have just been staying up all night and doing this all day at work but yeah they had to, they had to have their own dungeon crawl across the US you're, you're right but there's there's a bunch of these and uh, so when you use these at ReaperCon you're gonna be putting stickers on them so I know a lot of people that want to have like a full set, like for instance, because you're going to be putting stickers on the swords and the shields, and these scrolls down here on the bottom are going to have stickers on them as well. So these are going to be kind of all decorated and, and as you see, as you're needed to complete the dungeons. But I know some people are just going to want them for the, the completion artwork aspect of them. Um, and if you want to get them signed by the artist, like if you see the sculptor there or the painter and you know, and, and they're okay with signing it. Try not to bombard them, is what I would say. Uh, but it's a good icebreaker. I know a lot of people are scared, like, oh, it's Michael Proctor, you know? Right. How do I start to talk to him? You this know. is a good way. Hey, can you sign this card oh, for me? You don't me? have to worry about that. He'll talk to you first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll talk to you first. Completionist collector. So don't don't worry, like, this full box, all the ones that we have left over after ReaperCon will be gold going on sale uh, on ReaperMini.com. So you can buy the whole box of all the cards, but this will be sometime after ReaperCon. Because I, I want this to be kind of a collection game at ReaperCon itself. So you're gonna have to like trade and complete dungeons to get packs and go to the Reaper Bucks store and, and things like that. So that's kind of the idea. Obviously this is the first year that, I'm, that we're trying something like this. So if it goes well, we could do it in the future, but add more layers to it. And things like that. I could talk about how this all started as well. Because I, I know other conventions do other card games. Kind of kind of like this-ish. 
collectible type games with like pins and things like that where you have to go around the con and collect things. Expansion packs, yeah. So every Rupercon we kind of do like a theme, a theme. I think the hard part is gonna finding a lot of the painted models uh, for everything. Oh, there's something else. Oh man, I, I could have talked about this last time in Reaper Live. I'll talk about it on Reaper Live in the future as well. But Ed was talking to me about the um, Inspiration Gallery. So you guys know the old website used to have the Inspiration Gallery on it where let's say you typed in a model and it opened up the product page. On, side that, on that product page, there was an inspira Inspiration Gallery where people could submit models that were that model but painted. Um, and that way it could go into the inspiration gallery. So you can click and go search and look through all of the uh, entries that people submitted. And when we swapped to the new website, that kind of went away um, because it needed to be redone and coded and I guess refit for the new website. Well, Ed was talking to me about an idea that he had where the inspiration gallery in order like, uh, you know that we do the quarterly contests every quarter. And he said, well, what about everybody that submits into the quarterly contest will go into the inspiration gallery. And the top three winners, like the top three models that win the quarterly contest will be put onto the product page. So you'll have the, the product model, and you know how we have the additional photos underneath of all the different angles and then the painted versions? They could go there. The winners could go there because that kind of creates a little bit of an incentive. Like, right, you, you want to, yeah. yeah. You can't tell this is a great model. It's like, mm, I need more definition. Yeah. What is it supposed to look like? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a great idea. Plus, it'll help start to fill up the quarterly or the uh, inspiration gallery a lot quicker. Um, and then I, I discussed about doing them every month instead of quarter, but you would have to plan them out way ahead of time so people could have time to paint them and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So you would, you would probably put out a whole year's worth. Like in January, we're gonna paint this model. In February, we're gonna paint this model. So that way people have time to, you know, get them and paint them. Because a month is pretty quick turnaround for a lot of things. So if anybody has any ideas about that, let, let me know. Because I, I think that's a good plan. It, it, it puts a little bit of a, a, a nice incentive that's not just like sore credit onto the contest the core of the painting contest. I think that's very fun. And we would likely probably keep the same rules where if you won the last one, you can't enter into the next one kind of a thing. So that way you just don't, you know, somebody just comes in and starts dominating everything. Just like normal. You could pull the new releases from the RCL as well. Yeah, I could do that. Trash aroma. Hey, thanks for the Prime Freestyle. Uh, so Gamescom was this week. Um, and there was a new game that was presented by the guys who made Subnautica. If anybody in chat knows that game, Subnautica. And they were working with Brandon Sanderson uh, on a new game, a new sci-fi game. Have you heard about this? I have not. Oh. Okay. But Brandon Sanderson, yeah, that might have been Yeah. Uh, he's been working on this project with the guys who made Subnautica on their new game. And it's called Moonbreaker. And it is a, it's a miniature skirmish game, but like digital. And so you, it looks like from the trailers is that you have like, you have a commander and then you have uh, nine other units. So 10 units total. And you have those, you get to build your team, your, your units, and uh, they all have different abilities and movement patterns and attacks and things like, just like a normal skirmish game. Mm -hmm. And so that's your team. But the, the real kicker for this that caught my attention was they have this function in the game to where you can paint your minis. Okay. So it was a real cool thing because the way that they have it set up was, uh, you know, when we show you 3D turnarounds of models, um, you see they're all gray. 
generally, or a, a solid color. Um, that's what they look like in the game. So they're on bases and they're posed. They look like miniatures, and they're all gray. And they have a bunch of tools like airbrush, stippling, dry brush, wash, and all the different palettes and colors. And they showed in the trailer that you could paint them. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm not a big sci-fi guy, but I wanted to I wanted to reach out to them and see, like, hey, we make miniatures, and it'd be cool to. We could test your tool by painting our miniatures <laughs> for your game, but uh, even though I know we don't have a lot of sci-fi stuff, but it's pretty cool tech. It looks nice, uh, and everything that's in the trailer was painted by the devs, so. So I thought that was really cool. It's really interesting, especially because it's a full digital game. Because um, I know Christine's streaming right now, but I told her about there's a, there was an update for Procreate where you could paint on uh, digital models. So you could import STLs and, and OBJs into Procreate, I, I think is what I was told. And you could paint on them. So I thought that was pretty sick. So I don't know if she's uh, experimented with it, but I told her about it to look into it. Um, because some of the content ideas for stream... I've seen some miniature painters like doing feedback sessions mm -hmm. where you send them photos of your painted models and they pull them up on Procreate and they kind of say they can draw over them. Like, oh, this is what I would do, you know? Right. Make, make the shadows darker here or, or different things like that. Um, so I thought that was really, really interesting. And I, think that's a, I think that's good content to have. It's like feedback for, for contests or or whatever, just, just general feedback. I know a lot of people like don't aren't comfortable giving feedback because, like, in in a non judging f format, I guess. Right. Um, so I don't I don't know. Sir. Uh, liquid state, nice. That's not this. Uh, that's not this type of stream, brother. Christine isn't on now. Oh, I thought she was on. So, yeah, that, that's what's going on. So today, instead of just not doing anything, we, we have a lot of stuff to do, getting ready for ReaperCon. Uh, on Monday, uh, all the movers are going to come and move all the stuff. We're going to move in on Tuesday and start setting up for ReaperCon. Um, so for anybody coming to ReaperCon and taking a tour, it's going to feel a little bit bittersweet because um, this is probably going to be the last like ReaperCon set of tours that are gonna be in this building. Cause the plan is, the current plan and timeline is that we will not be in this building uh, next year. Here, let me. So, oops, sorry. Let me, let me uh, adjust here. Yeah. So, all right, well then we'll take, we'll see you tomorrow. We're uh, making, Making little packs, you see? Little card packs. So, this is kind of like uh, what's gonna be handed out. You're a painting bully? A very productive Reaper land? Yeah, this is kind of another uh, idea, like a little sneak, is an idea that I had for the new, for the new factory, is that we set up cameras everywhere uh, in the new factory, that way you guys can, uh, you guys can, uh, like use your channel points or donate bits or whatever to swap the cameras. So if you want to look at what's going on in casting, or if you want to look at what's going on in mold making or, or see it mold, uh, casting internet department, all the internet's being pulled. Um, that way you can kind of swap the cameras around and, and follow. I think that'll be cool. Um, that's another idea for Reaper Con as well, is setting up a bunch of cameras around the convention so people that are, are watching, like when we go to break and stuff, you can, you can swap the cameras by like using your channel points or bits or, or whatever we decide. <laughs> yeah. 
And it'll be a lot like this. And it would be cool to have like a studio like that to where you can have like big TVs with chat pulled up. So that way people can read chat. <laughs> Big Brother Reaper Edition. Yeah. And we would have music playing probably or something. You wouldn't probably hear, be able to hear audio. But. Uh, would you remind repeating the part about tours during Rupercon if we have our own transportation? Do we just show up 30 minutes before? So if you're coming to a tour and you're not riding the bus and you're bringing your own car, um, just meet us at the factory, uh, the factory proper. You'll see us. Um, the time that is listed for the tours, which is 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., those are when we leave the hotel to come here. And it takes about 15 to 25 minutes, depending on traffic, to get here. So you, you will likely beat us, the, the bus, the tour bus, to Reaper, the, the factory. So just keep in mind that you know, show up like 15, 25 minutes after 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. when the bus leaves the hotel. So, if you're bringing your own car to the tour. The ticket, the tour tickets and the spots that are listed for the tour are generally for to get on the tour bus because the tour bus only has a limited amount of seats and I'm only one, one guy. So, um, it's kind of hard to give a tour to, um, you know, 40, 40 plus people all at once. So keeping them in small groups is really manageable because there's, this is a factory and there's not a lot of space in some areas, but I have some solutions that I'm gonna try this year uh, for the tours. In particular, casting has always been a real, a real uh, sore issue spot because, not a sore issue, but a, a sore spot for tours because the, the lanes in casting are so small that they can't really fit a lot of people. And so what I'm gonna do this year is I'm gonna have like an assembly line type situation where I'm gonna talk to everybody all at once about all the information that I would give in casting. And then I'm gonna go in there and demonstrate as people walk in a, a, a circle. So we'll have like, you go in one way and you come out the other. So that way everybody gets to see it all up close in a timely fashion instead of splitting the group and forth and things like that. You know, it's been a nightmare in the past, so. <laughs> but. I think I got a I think I got a pretty solid solution this year around. So yeah. How do you get tickets or the tour? So the, the tour tickets right now I believe are sold out. Uh, all the all the spots for the tours are sold out. Um, but like I said, if you if you have your own car, just show up uh, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes after the listed time that the tour starts. So if the tour starts at two, you show up at uh, two twenty. 215 at the factory at Reaper factory Reaper proper So there you go Yes, I agree. I, I have a speaker trash Rama. Yeah Oh, I didn't do oh, yeah, I did I did lose my voice uh, During the tour or during the Reaper con the first year that I did all the tours I got sick halfway through or not sick. I'm sorry. My throat gave out halfway through the tours. So Dave had to jump in and help me. <sighs> Stay hydrated. Another thing that came in chat, hold on, let me get it. I uh, hold on, I'm getting the, I'm getting my, my thing. Unboxing stream. Unboxing stream. All right, so uh, we got a we got a package. We got a package today, chat. Uh, yeah, Ed and Dave are going to be busy during ReaperCon, so we will likely not see a lot of them at ReaperCon, to be honest. Um, they'll they'll be busy. Uh, just the job delivery of uh, director's chairs. Director's chairs. <laughs> and you want to know where to put them. Yeah, Justin just uh, got director's chairs. And uh, they were telling me they're trying. That's a... That's a <laughs> what? It's a pandas. It is. <laughs> so, guys, my 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 uh, outfit for, for Friday came in. <laughs> so, this is, uh, this is my... This is my... Uh, this is my uh, outfit for Friday. So I'll be giving the tours maybe in this. I doubt, doubt it actually, because it's gonna be very hot. 
I might just wear this at the con after the tours, after six, six o'clock for the costume contest and things like that. So, uh, I'm going to be a bone panda for the bone pandas. You're, What's up? Oh, we're we're live, live, by the way. I'm just saying. So you know. Okay. Everybody needs a coordinate. And then I, I got marbles for the marble track. Uh, so we're going to paint these. I also might order a lot more for next week, actually. I had an idea to tell Ludo for the paint and take, is that uh, maybe during one of the events, everybody could paint marbles. And then whoever wins those marble races might get store credit or something. That'd be fun. You got, that way you can paint your marble and decorate it however you want. But that's what I got in my box, my delivery box today. So, I got my panda suit. Oh, can you see Justin? That's Justin, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Justin's in the background. Hey, uh, I might get up and show, oh. I might get up and show the factory here in a little bit, but we gotta get back to doing these cards real quick. Oh, let me scoot this back so you guys can see the table here. There you go, that's better. Just organizing everything. Kind of sorting everything out. So <clears throat> I ordered everything as like a deck of cards. So there's, there's 55 cards total. So all the dungeons are in there and the rock, paper, scissors cards are in there. Uh, so I have to take those out because I'm gonna be using those for something else. Uh, and then these can be sorted and, and put into their, their respective packs and things like that as they're being made. So, and there's no rarities or anything this year. They're, they're all kind of generically uh, the same, you know? So you, it's possible that you might get duplicates. I mean, you will get duplicates for sure, but I guess the, the upside of that is that this was designed to be kind of like a social social game to where you go and you trade with other players and and do things like that. And try to collect, I guess, if you want. No foils? I wish. Maybe next year. If, we, if this is a success, which we don't know if it will be or not, but um, I want to try to do more stuff in the future. This is just kind of the first... I've been... I've been planning this and wanting to do something like this for a year now. So it feels good to finally have things kind of falling in place right at the last minute, some would say. Right in the nick of time. But yeah. Well, does anybody have any good plans this weekend? Other than watching uh, House of the Dragon. How many different cards are in the whole set? Uh, well, there, there's 55. There's six dungeons. There's four special art cards, these, the, the concept art. And then there's three rock, paper, scissors cards. And the rest are all heroes. The rest are all paint job, uh, Sculptor, painter, dungeoneer cards. So the rest of them, what is that? Six, 10, 13, 55 minus 13, 42. So there's 42 cards. Quick math. There's, uh, there's 42 cards, individual cards that are these types with the different paint jobs and the different models. Oh, you're playing Twilight Imperium this weekend. You'll need more than that. Yeah, you'll need more than the weekend. You'll be playing it all the way until ReaperCon, where you have to put it on hold. It's so. very adorable. What, you want to show chat? Uh, yeah, I can show yeah, chat. Yeah. I don't know how I do that. Justin's being stingy. I am being stingy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see. Oh, where's, where's the actual... Uh, camera's over here. Okay. I was talking about the... Uh, let's... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Looks like a little alien. <laughs> he does. I mean, he really he acts like a little alien. With big old eyes. That's what it is. But he's, he's, a, he's a good boy. Baby. Munchkin. Make sure these don't repeat. Oh, there's a double holly monster in there. Boring. Double holly monster all the way. I 
I wish. Uh, I wish we had like a some kind of big brown statue or something. I know I showed uh, that that idea of the of the stained glass. Uh, so I have the uh, the i the idea of the stained glass uh, is pretty cool. I want to do that still. I was thinking about doing that for the dungeons this year. So maybe next year. I I have an I have an idea for next year. And obviously I'll be planning it way ahead. And I'll have it all done. It's just that this came in last minute. Yeah, good twin Fletcher, you got it. Uh, I'm just getting the packs ready for for Reapercon. What did Twisted Oma say? Yes, it was Justin's new baby. That's who made an appearance. Hey, Jacob Jansen. What's up, Jacob? Sign up for Reapercon. So yeah, a lot of crazy stuff. Don't worry, um, here in a little bit, um, what time is it? 3.30? So here in a little bit, I'll, I'll get up and I'll show, uh, what, we'll walk through the factory for a second and show you kind of swag box stuff, why everything's laid out. Uh, so Quindy, so, uh, not Quindy, sorry, Cindy. <laughs> Cindy left uh, for today. She's, today's her son's birthday, so she left a little bit early. Um, but we're, we're in the process of making swag boxes back there. Um, the medium swag boxes. So we're trying to get as many as we can made before the show, obviously. And that's what I'm doing. That's what these are for. These are for the, the medium swag boxes. See, if you guys weren't here, I'd just be listening to music, just sitting here by myself. Uh, we're currently in the break room as well, by the way. So you might see, you might see people walk behind me and stuff and you might hear people talking. Talking and so there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of deliveries. The doorbell keeps ringing. People just coming in and out. So pure chaos. Yes. Can't wait for everybody to get their meat bags. What? I thrive in it. What chaos? So in theory, we're getting the rest of the bones 5.5 on Monday. It oh. sounds like a bad thing for us. <laughs> yes. But it's on pallet, so we don't have to. Oh. It's on pallet? Yeah. That's what the email says. So. Oh. Interesting. So if it, it's on, it's supposed to be on like 14 pallets. And if Total? that's the case, yeah. Oh. If that's the case, then. Can y'all hear Courtney? It'll take like, take me an hour to do, opposed to shutting down the factory for half a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yes, it is to seen. Yes. yes. Somebody asked if that was to seen. Yeah. It is. Yeah, you can hear him? Cool. Yeah, Justin was worried about the audio quality on my phone. But it seems to be doing fine. Yeah, but that that Moonbreaker game looks interesting. But with the technology it's it was pretty interesting. It's the first kind of like digital I guess a uh, miniature skirmish game that you could paint your minis online. It's kind of the first of its kind so far. Uh, what are, people asked me a bunch of questions last night. Oh, somebody was asking a question about D and D one last night. Um, you don't play D and D, do you? Uh, here and there. Here and there. Okay. Like a, we were doing a campaign like with Carlos and over the past year or so, but we were doing a tomb, a tomb of Annihilation. Yeah. But that's really... The extent. That's the extent of it. Before that, I played Pathfinder with some, yeah. some magic people. Yeah. Number Cruncher? Yes. <laughs> I could do that, tr Trash. I thought that Anne wasn't going to stream until Friday. Shoot, today is Friday. <laughs> Missed the in-person pup date. Must go back and watch. Yeah, the, the, the VOD should be up for you to go check that. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. I forgot. Something about D&D &D 1? Oh, D&D &D 1. Yes, a lot of people were asking us last night about um, with D&D with &D kind of going this tabletop virtual shenanigans... Uh, I talked to a bunch of people in the Discord about it, and 
I asked a bunch of questions on the D and D Discord and things like that, but no one really has an answer for me. Because in the announcement, they had talked about miniatures, right? But I think it was, I think it, they said customizable miniatures. Uh, this is this is referring to the digital thing that they're developing, right? And it said customizable miniatures, and I was like, I was wondering if you could import STLs or would they allow you to import your own stuff, which I don't know if they will, because they, they already have digital files, because mm -hmm. all of their deep cuts and all the WizKids models already have STLs because they had to have them to make the models. Right. So um, it's a little interesting from that point of view. So I, I doubt that they would allow that. I think they're, they're probably going to start with their catalog of, of STLs that they have. And then whatever that they're, whatever custom software they're going to deploy in order to have customizable stuff along the lines of like Hero Forge. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's all new and we don't really know any of the answers right now. Because if they allowed people to use STLs, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, and if that happened, then it might push Reaper over the edge yeah. to sell yeah, STLs. Sell STLs. So. Because that, that makes, it actually gives it a purpose. I mean, not that they don't have purposes right now, but it's just 3D printing is still kind of in its infancy. And we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll adapt with the times. We've been talking about it for years, but nothing has actually come of anything yet. But it's just interesting. It's, it's cool. It's weird to see. Uh, that's, that was my main question. Was, was that. Hey, Zach, Zachariah. Gray Mauser. Already missed the marbles. Yeah, no marbles today. Yes, no marbles today. No, you just, had a, you just mm -hmm. did a bag of them. That's all it. Moonraker. Oh, 3D printing is in its toddlerhood. Yeah, you're right. It's not in its infancy anymore. It's, it's a toddler at the moment. I, I compare it to computers, like in the 90s and stuff. They were big and bulky and expensive. Not everybody had them. Eventually, things will become cheaper, smaller, more accessible, and then everybody will have them. Because I, I have a feeling 3D printing will be used more than just uh, miniatures. They already are. Yeah. Let's be real. I mean, <laughs> My the, tooth. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the printers that we use are literally for dental mm -hmm. purposes. Yeah. I saw, when I went to my dentist office, they, they let me go in the back because they know that I work at a miniature place and that I deal with 3D printing and stuff. They wanted me to, they took me into the back and showed me the machines working. It was actually milling and 3D printing my tooth. It was pretty cool. So, and I, I, I kind of described it like, oh, what happens if my door handle on my fridge breaks off? I could just go 3D print another one, you know? It, you know, that's the kind of in the future kind of an idea. I thought it was a cool, cool little idea. I play a bard. <laughs> you play a bard? I, there's a question about oh. EverQuest. Oh, EverQuest, yeah. yeah. Wait, there's a bard in EverQuest? Yeah. I know yeah. Trash plays EverQuest. Uh, yeah, I play on the Vaniki server. The Vaniki? Yeah. Vaniki, like a K? Has a K in there? Uh, yes. Vaniki. So bards in EverQuest are a little different than bards in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. They, a run real fast. That's like their thing. Their thing, and they they kind of just do everything. They do everything like bards of D. &D. Yeah, like yeah. You got mez and slows and snares and all sorts of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, but but they run real fast. That's the. That's their thing. That's their thing. Is there something like capture the flag in EverQuest? Mm, no, not really. Okay. Like, I mean, there's some like GM games that you do it. Uh, this is Tassine, yeah. I don't know if you. Hold on. There he is. He's just sitting over there. <laughs> yeah. I'm answering 800 questions about ReaperCon for uh, for Ron. For Ron. <laughs> yeah. They say hi to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have chat full Yeah, he's the guy who gives you all your free stuff. Yeah. I'm 
I'm the world's favorite guy. Yeah, yeah. Be nice to him. It'll give you extra <laughs> stuff. Who knows? Because um, I've never played EverQuest. Um, it was slightly before me. Um, my big thing was Final Fantasy XI, which a lot of people say is... I wouldn't say it's similar, but... Yeah. It falls in the same vein. Yeah, it's like a, one of those old... It's the old school. Because mm-hmm. in EverQuest, do you have camps? Yeah. Where you have to pull mobs? Yeah. Two? Yeah. yeah. That's the... We did that in eleven. It was so nice, man. I have so I could t- I could spend a whole Reaper Land episode talking about Final Fantasy eleven. Um, it I spent eight years playing that game. It was like my childhood. It's crazy because I it taught me cardinal directions. <laughs> so I I didn't know northeast south, northeast south and west mm-hmm. uh, until I played Final Fantasy eleven, because then you you know they have the markers on the map. Right. <laughs> so that's how I learned my northeast south and west. Also. Uh, certain words and stuff because Final Fantasy XI had this feature called uh, auto-translate where you would start to type in a word like left uh, and then you would hit tab mm-hmm. uh, in your in your chat box and it would it would put up auto-translate and it would translate it to all uh, languages but it would have these red and green triangles around it so that way everybody everybody around the world could communicate with each other and that was very cool that is cool so that way you could be like, and it had basic phrases like, party, do you need it? Or, you know, sleepy, <laughs> I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> you, you, there was all kinds of ways that you can communicate with other players, and it was very fun. Neverwinter Nights. GW2. I've, I've heard um, Guild Wars 2 was pretty good now, nowadays. I know it's been in development for a long time, and I played Guild Wars 1 a little bit. But my main game was 11. I just stuck on that game forever. Is it the one Paul still plays? Or yeah, or a little bit. Yeah, he goes back to it every now and then. Yes. They just had their 22nd anniversary? No, the 20th anniversary. Because it started in, in uh, the summer of 2002 uh, in, in Japan. Mm-hmm. And then it came to the U.S. in 2004. I think, I think that's right. It was two years later. Such a fun game. Yeah, and I know a lot of people in our community play Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I play XIV. Um, I was very excited when XIV first came out in the first iteration because I was a big eleven person. And I was like, oh, it's the next upgrade, you know? Mm-hmm. But it was not that. <laughs> it's not that at all. I mean, I watch people play it on Twitch. Yeah. It's, it's real pretty. Fourteen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a- all the little rates mm-hmm. and whatnot. It's like, oh, this is this is cool to watch and it has epic music, which you know. Oh, the music's you just great. Come to expect from Final Fantasy. Yeah, they've been getting better and better. Um, but hmm. we'll see. I keep ending up with Dora and Eyebrow at the end. <laughs> I was in the beta one point but never got in until 2.0, so somehow I got the Survivor's Ring. Oh, nice. That's cool. Do you know the history of 14? No. A little bit. So quick, quick, quick history is that the first game released, uh, and it was terrible. So mm-hmm. nobody, you know, it got so many bad reviews. It got tanked. The player base was not there. Mm-hmm. It was just not good. So uh, a guy named Yoshi P, Yoshida-san, uh, was a part of uh, Square Enix, and he was working on other games, like uh, Dragon Quest and things like that. And then he came onto the team and kind of basically was hired to resurrect it, mm-hmm. the overhaul it, fix it. <laughs> and so he he's a big you know he's a big data person, kind of mm-hmm. like you, where he he organized everybody's like work hours and what they were going to be working on and uh, optimized everything. Sure. Yeah. And in the course of a year, I think a year, two years, they basically made a whole new game. And it got re-released, and that's why it's called A Realm Reborn. Okay. Because in the game, there was a giant moon in the sky, a giant red-like sphere, that uh, every month it got closer and closer to the game world. And it was actually like where Bahamut was being held, and he broke out and then destroyed everything. All right. But in the story, one of the mages teleported everybody, or a handful of people, five years into the future. To, and they're, they're called like the Light you know the, the party of yeah life. yes essentially and that that's when a realm reborn started so that that's how they restarted the game was they destroyed the world and then they, rebuilt it sometimes yeah. that's what you have to do yeah 
and it that's where the game started to come back and that's why you see this big resurgence mm -hmm. and oh it's been in development for 10 years now but that that's why it was such a big win because it was such a it was such a loss for them and it was such a big deal because they let everybody down and the game was horrible and it was just bad, bad news all around. And then they turn around and Yoshi P is now a god. <laughs> he's he's like seen as like this, the godfather savior of everything. So uh, it's a good time. It's a good. It's it was fun to fun to watch. And so that's what he's talking about is the survivors ring. So a lot of people that were there from the beginning got a lot of bunch of extra stuff that nobody can ever get anymore because the world was destroyed. Right. The skill balance is part of the plan, pretty much. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, they do a pretty good job so far. I play an astrologian in that game. It's one of my favorite. I always play support classes and healers. So when you said bard, I was like, oh yeah, because I played bard in eleven. Mm -hmm. But they're they're the traditional play songs, buff the party. Right. And their songs are all uh, AOE based or like proximity based. Right. So you had to like run to different parts of the party so like you have your rangers standing over there and you have your healers and black mages and things over there so you gotta you have to balance where you are and you have to run to different parts of the battlefield to make sure the rings don't overlap and things like that so it was a very active play style it was, right. it was a good time but i generally play support characters well bards and everquests you can either have them just stand there and do nothing uh -huh. which a lot of people multi-box oh yes and they'll play a bard because they also do a but usually long enough to reach everybody I got it or they're like the premier poolers yep oh, that, that's, that's what, what we that's, use ours too that's what i do most of the time yeah otherwise our I, are I get bored and distracted under the other mm -hmm. screen yeah it's very nice because uh the bards like and for 11 purposes the bards will like they'll you have to know when to leave the camp mm -hmm. like you'll see the the mob at like 20 yeah, percent like 20 yeah. Like, so by the time you everybody killing, yeah, yeah. You want so, another one right there. Yeah, right when you finish that one, it's the other one's coming in. Yeah, it was the, when that lines up perfectly. It's like chef's kiss, because mm -hmm. then you get into a rhythm. You're you're in a party for a couple of hours. And you get into mm -hmm. like a, a cycle a rotation. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like they're pretty similar in like they're probably yeah. leveling concepts, and that was a big deal because back in the day for Final Fantasy XI was, I, I'm assuming it's the same for for EverQuest is. That you basically had to like sit and wait with your party flag up and like people would build parties and they would message you and say mm -hmm. hey party do you need it and yeah you would have to go to that location so you would you have you would have to account for travel time and things like that and the 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 nice thing to do is like let's say i was i needed to leave in an hour or 30 minutes i would find my own replacement so right. i would message somebody and say hey can you come to this location this is where we're camping I'm assuming. It's Ideally, insane. yeah. So, yeah. So sometimes people just leave and it's like, oh, wait, you're yeah. the tank. Yeah. I guess we're done. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of people would message the party leader. Yeah. And they say, hey, can you find me a replacement? I got to go soon. So, I was, yeah, it sounds, it sounds pretty much the same. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Uh, John, you, yeah, you probably would like playing Enchanter and EverQuest. Yeah? Yeah. They, they like buffers? Uh, they buff. They have the best haste in the game. Mm. They slow. They give out. Mana regen. Yeah, that sounds like a red mage in Final Fantasy XI. They they get a charm which is really good in early EverQuest. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's broken. <laughs> broken. Yeah. Because you're doing more DPS than like maybe your whole party. Oh man. So. But then the charm breaks and then you <laughs> have something doing more DPS than your whole party coming after <laughs> you. So. Uh, is PVP a big deal in the EverQuest? No. It's not so, a big deal in Final Fantasy either. There, there were a couple servers that are, you know, PvP, but it, is, it never took... It, it was never balanced by the devs, so mm -hmm. it kind of got pushed to the wayside. Is, is everything kind of explained to you in a request? Like, when you first start the game, mm -hmm. is it like, go here, talk to this person, or do this? No? Same thing for 11. They don't tell you anything. The, there is a tutorial that is nice now, oh. but it was added way, way, way later. later. Yeah. Same thing for eleven, yeah. There's, the the game doesn't tell you where to go or where to do or anything. Yeah. It's basically it's what they call a sandbox, right? Yeah. Um. So you just get to go do whatever. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I play Astro in fourteen just because I think it's cool. They're healers. They basically pull tarot cards essentially, and depending on which card you draw is what effect it gives. 
So like this card gives attack speed, and then you have to like give it to a party member. Mm -hmm. So you're like constantly drawing cards, and you're like, oh, what did I draw? Oh, I don't like this one. I don't want this one right now. Redraw. So you just right. draw another card, and then you like give the cards to people. So and it's kind of like almost like time magey ish, but yeah. but it's more healing. It's pretty cool. It's a very active playstyle, pulling cards and stuff. Hey, John, how do we find a request, one card in particular? Let's say your art is on it. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's on that sheet. Um, you're looking for... Um, I can't remember what I put your name down. Um, Kara, as an artist, uh, Kara... Curly, Kara Curly. It'll be on the left side of the bottom of the card. Of the artist. So you're looking for Kara Curly. Oh, the Hex Witch. So yeah, the, the witch. She's very bright. Oh, bottom, uh, second one on the bottom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about her? That, that's uh, that's, that's the person in chat. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean Dancer in, in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, when I open up a box, Kara, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Here. I'll open up a box. I'll pull it. Yeah. I'll find it for you, Kara. Don't worry. No, all humans in EverQuest have an eye patch. I don't. <laughs> it's sad because games like that are probably never ever going to be made again. Right. It's so sad. Now, now everything's like, you hit a button that says join dungeon and you automatically find a party and join there and you You're don't have to there. travel or anything. Right. You're live, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah, we're in the break room, so a lot of people are coming to the bathroom and stuff, so. What's up with the giant panda? Oh, that's going to be my outfit for Friday night at ReaperCon. Oh. It's an inflatable panda suit. Oh, okay. I was just as shocked when he pulled it out of the box. Yeah. Yeah, for anybody that's just joining, <laughs> this is my outfit for... Is this... It's a bone panda. It's one of the factions. There's also otter smarts. Otter so smarts. Yeah, you can go get the otter Yeah. Boop. Inflate inflatable <laughs> otter suit. What? I already don't want to be a reaper. I want to be an otter. Uh, here you go, Kara. I found it. So, there's your, uh, there's your card. I I would assume if you're coming to ReaperCon, which I think you are, uh, you'll be able to collect these or find them or bribe people to trade them for you or get them signed or whatever. Trade them for Reaper bucks. Yeah, trade them for Reaper bucks. Yeah. Find your card. Is there anybody else in chat that has a card that would like to see it? Um, let's see who else would be in here. I don't know if um, Aaron's in chat, or Patrick Chambers, or Carrie Michael Cosby. I don't know if you guys are in chat. I should have, I, I, would, I would have messaged you uh, if I used your art. Yeah, the cards turned out great. Uh, I obviously, I've been waiting them for for a while now, months. And, you know, obviously they they look great. I would probably want them to be a little bit brighter uh, on the actual, like, figure art. Because right now they seem a little dark, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, definitely for our first go-around there. Yeah. And this isn't to be, like, some complicated system. It's very simple. Attack beats attack, defense beats defense, and it, it's more social, more social game. More trading, getting things signed, having fun, collecting. Oh, Carrie Michael Cosby. Oh, you've all seen it. Uh, yeah, it's the, uh, yours is the cow, the Highland Minotaur. Oh, yes, that's Yeah, the Highland Minotaur. That one's very fun. Can you find the knoll? Um... Yes, let me, I gotta open it a bit. I can find you some uh, green users. Yeah, I'll find you some green user cards. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some Julie and some Bobs in here. So, I think I heard Glenn Harris is not coming or, I don't know if that's, is, is he? Did he? I can't remember what happened believe, with Glenn. Yeah, I believe he's not coming. Oh, is man. Is he the one, one of the ones that he teaches the children's class? Yes. Yeah, I don't believe he's coming. 
All right, looking for the knoll for, for Bob and Julie. The knoll. Oh, this one's one of my favorites. Oh, here it is. Lee Hanu is what I named him. So here's the knoll for Bob and Julie. Yeah, uh, painted by Proctor, sculpted by Julie. There you go. Sorry for the glare. Is it right side on, on the on the camera or is it backwards? Um, I got you're I, a little I'm, delayed. I'm on a delay. That's fine. But eh, you can still the art. That's what matters. And then here's a here's a Bob. Here's a Bob. It's a Rictus. I know you remember doing Rictus, Bob. Uh, also painted by Proctor. Rictus the Undying. There you go. They look great. I think this is one of my favorites. This was um, painted by Otis. If I don't know if Otis yeah, is in chat. Right oh, they are? Cool. Yeah. Uh, Otis is in chat. I don't know if he's here. Uh, Rings Raccoon, formerly known as Rings Raccoon. But Otis, he painted this one, sculpted by Paul Muller. I like the Crypt Guardian. It's one of my, I like this piece a lot. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Late start today, Pendrake? No, we, we started early. It's uh, 3.52 here. Okay, this front works. Cool. It just looks backward on my camera. Yeah, we might need to go pick up some server sharpies to hand them out to the Oh, guys. yeah, that is a good idea. Just put it one more thing for one to do. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are easy, you know. <laughs> I can't remember getting a Crypt Guardian. Uh, they just came out in Bones USA a few months ago. Uh, the Crypt Guardian. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool piece. Um, it looks really fun when it when it, when you cast it. Logged up to catch on Reaper Live and have watched of Swords cards for an hour. Love rock and roll Friday night. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I know it's not that exciting, but instead of just canceling Reaper Land and I would have to do this, we just decided to to try going live on the phone and see 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 how it goes. You know, just just to have something. Because I want to do more stuff like this, more vloggy type, not streams, but more like videos, a day in the life of certain departments and things like that. Yeah, just maybe not around Reapercon. Yes, <laughs> not around Reapercon. Right now it's pretty messy and I wouldn't say it's messy, it's just uh, everything's all over the place, still being sorted and moved and... There's still a lot of work. That's yeah, okay. yes. <laughs> and there's still Kickstarter stuff. I think if there was no Kickstarter here, it might be okay. <laughs> I mean, it definitely adds to the to the fun factor. Yeah. So, I don't know. If I We, we kind of were talking about it a little bit earlier, but the container might show up on Monday. E. But Courtney said that they're all on pallets, so uh, we don't have to, like, unload them off of the truck. You can just use the forklift. Mm -hmm. Basically cuts the time down in a fourth yeah. of and, the time. And the manpower by... All... <laughs> by 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> so are you selling packs for these cards or are they just at Reapercon? So the all the packs and stuff, so these are going into the swag, back, swag boxes. And there will be packs for everything around Reapercon. So the Reaper Bucks store, the booth, the artist, the classes, the... Pretty much everything that I can, I will try to get packs to, like metal trade table, things like that. The vendor stuff, I'm going to try to get packs for. Um, that way, uh, hobby hijinks, paint and take, things like that. You'll just randomly get handed out packs and as you do things around the con. Maybe the DMs as well if you play in games. And the point is, is just to kind of go through these dungeons if you want and collect the cards. And It's meant to be kind of a social fun thing it's not like some competitive shenanigans but if you do want to to have uh competitive shenanigans each each starter thing will have rock paper scissors uh that come in your in your box in your your starter box so that way i was thinking about having a rock paper scissors tournament of some kind maybe sunday morning or sunday afternoon or something like that i don't know it's just a thought i had and the way that it, it's very simple you just have your your three cards in your hand you can shuffle them or whatever and then you you put your choice face down and then you and your opponent flip them up at the same time 
and then it's basic rock, paper, scissors. So, yeah, it's just a fun little idea that I thought might be fun. Uh, John, will the swag box contents be on sale for the Reaper booth at the convention? I'm getting a box, but I need to buy an extra paint set. That is a good question. I don't know if the paints will be for sale outside of the box. I believe so. You believe the so? The triads will be. I do not know about the super, super washes. washes. So, so triads is a maybe. Yeah. <laughs> super washes is probably a no. It's more of a supply supply issue than anything else. If, yeah. If we have extra from after we build these five boxes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything we have extra of will definitely be yeah. on sale and we'll definitely try to sell it at the ReaperCon as well. Yeah, and in the weeks and months after ReaperCon, you know, things always slowly start to come out. Mm -hmm. So the the super washes will this is kind of like their test run, I guess. Their first iteration. And we thought this would be a good test to get them into people's hands. Good old super washes. Oh, yeah. Move the box. It's crazy because this is only the first box that I've opened. Yeah, you. This is a crazy <laughs> amount of cards. Yeah. It's quite a lot. It's, it's probably double the amount of what we needed, but I don't know. <laughs> I didn't order them. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like most things we order. We order. Nowhere near enough. Yeah. Or yes. why, why do we have so many of them? But these are so, I guess, I wouldn't say they're, they're cheap, but they're so, uh, compared to other things, they're, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, this was. The, the price difference between 1000 and 2000 is yeah. not that much. Yeah. I mean, especially once you get, you just start getting better deals, the more you order. Mm -hmm. There you go. But I gotta finish, uh, I don't know how many I've done so far. Uh, well, this is another hundred. This is, so once uh, you finish that, how many boxes have you done of Dragon Show? Uh, of the, these? Probably yeah. two. This would be the second box. Okay, so, so 100, 200, uh, 300? Yeah. Additional, so 500 total so far? Okay. Still one heck of a TGIF, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, what, nobody answered what they're doing for the weekend. I know House of the Dragon started, obviously. I started, we, we're having watch parties at my friend's house for it. Like I, like I assume most people did for Game of Thrones. And it's, and it's before season eight, of course. Trash. <laughs> Traveling to ReaperCon. Oh wait, Jacob, you're gonna get here early? Are you arriving at the hotel early? I think that's what you did last time as well. Sunday evening. Fun times. Um, uh, Tassine went by the new D20 Tavern. I haven't been there yet. Mm -hmm. um, so great. That's a fun little, uh, if you're coming into town early or if you're staying for a little bit and you go down to the square, the Denton Square, which is probably about, I don't know, five minutes away from the hotel, 10 minutes away. Yeah. Um, there's a new D20 tavern. It's like a bar, but with board games. What are they first? A game store first, and then a bar, or a bar, uh, they're and a then bar. a game store? They're a bar first. They're a bar where you can play games. Yeah, bar where you can play games. <laughs> uh, they have, if I remember correctly, all the, all their beer, beer is local. All well. their beer? Yeah. Oh. So. It's kind of like what Austin... Uh, not Austin, sorry, Keller. There's a place we go to in Keller that has all local stuff. All their food is from Keller. Uh, running by the D20 Tavern, yeah. Since you're local. Disc golf and classical music at an outdoor venue. Nice. There's a. have always wanted to try disc golf. There's a diff, disc golf place right near our house. Um, seems like something that would be fun. Particularly because you don't have to be in like super good shape <laughs> to to do it. Right. I mean, most of its participants are high. Quite... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in inhibited. <laughs> the naughty gnome tavern. What's that, cursed? I love gnomes. They call me the angry gnome. I run a meetup in our area. Nice. 
Hey, I don't know if Reaper has ever had a, uh, a miniature swap meet, but I was thinking of the metal trade table stuff this week, and I was wondering if we should just do, like, a certain time during the weekend at ReaperCon where people can come and do, like, a miniature swap meet. That'd be fun. I mean, that'd be cool. I don't know what that looks like, but... <laughs> Have we been to the new Madness store in Denton? I, have I haven't not. been to Madness in a while. Yeah, I haven't seen Jim. <laughs> yeah. Since they were on Elm Street, right? Yeah, they were on Elm Street, and then they were on University. University? And I think they're still on University, but further oh. down. Oh, wow, they moved again? Well, I have not, Treasurama. I mean, I, I drive past it every once in a while. I don't know. It looks like a Jim's place. I don't know. It's... Uh, yeah, there you go. Add one more thing. Well, I mean, ideally you would uh, delegate people to do it. I'm just the idea guy. <laughs> Which is why I'm really sad, because I planned on running this card game all weekend. But uh, some things came up, and I have to do all the tours now. So uh, I will be gone from 9 to 6 pretty much every day. So I'll, I'll be at the convention hall at 6. But that, that's when the fun starts anyway. So for anybody that hasn't been to ReaperCon or whatever, a lot of people just hang out at night in the main foyer at the bar and, you know, people go out to dinner and there's a lot of board games being played, a lot of people playing D&D. Oh, that's, &D. that's your relaxed time because it, all day yeah. you're in classes. Wow. Yeah, it's the relaxed time. It's the, it's the fun time. Yeah. And I will not be able to play in the Husky Boy D&D &D game on Sunday morning, which is the highlight of last year's ReaperCon for me. <laughs> Uh, that was really fun. And uh, sad to say that Mike Disney will not be at ReaperCon this year, which I'm sad. He was a, he was a part of the Husky Boys D&D game on Sunday. That was a, that was a fun, fun time. Uh, everybody's been saying, Lord Dave, that they're going to miss you. Yeah, everybody said, oh, man, I, I didn't know uh, Cecil and his wife were not going to be there. I'm, I'm sad. So... A lot of people are sad you're not going to be there, Lord Dave. Who am I going to talk to in the morning? But there's always next year and, and, and future ReaperCons to come. I know this is a hot topic, but uh, I think I finally convinced whoever needed to be convinced that we're not going to be using Grotex next year. So. Oh, that would be great. So I think we will be swapping to something. Um, I'm talking to Trash probably about using tabletop of tabletop events, I think, um, which is pretty solid. I used it for uh, when we went to Board Game Geek Con, mm -hmm. and I I think it worked pretty great. It worked great. So um, something that is able to have a lot of the information and have everything uh, easily presented. Um, so I know that a lot of people will be here to happy happy to hear that we're thinking about not using Grotex next year. So. We finally, I finally pushed and it grown ticks. <laughs> John, do you know some of the food trucks that will be popping up at the con? Any particular recommendations? Um, I don't. I heard that Fast and Furious might be back, which is my favorite. Uh, I ate there every year last year. Um, that's just my go-to. But I'm a very simple boy. Uh, I can eat the same thing every day. Uh, I'm, I'm a simple chicken fried rice type of person, but I don't know the full list of uh, food trucks. I'll, I'll try to talk to Ron after this if he knows, because uh, I know Dave was handling that. Yeah. I know there was one confirmed, but I don't remember which one it was. Mm -hmm. And then there was a few others, but... Oh. Uh -huh. And the crowds waved multicolored strike children banners. Oh, gosh, is he? <laughs> but yeah. Oh, it's Justin. Oh, yes, it is. Do y'all need more of these? No. no are y'all are y'all making VIP or swag? Well, I was just coming in here because I assume we're gonna wrap up the stream. Oh, I, I can. I can't raid from here. I don't think. No, I'd have to raid from here. Well, actually, Quinn. Wait, can I type me. in chat? Yeah. Or do I have well, to log yeah, in? Yeah, but you're logged in as nobody. So actually, maybe you can. I can't. You're not following. Oh, hold on. Are these? What is this? Those are the prints. Oh, okay. Ooh. 
Those are, yeah, the... Oh, I can't do slash raid. Printos. Well, uh, also, uh, Trash is in chat as well. Hey, do, is anybody on chat? Who's, who's on right now? Who's, who's streaming? Uh, I know Miniac normally streams at this time, but he normally gets off around this time as well. Um, I know that those boys, uh, the Miniac boys, are going to try to come down uh, at some point and take a tour. So hopefully we can show them a good time. I like I like Ninjon and Mike Disney just went Scott. Live. You can go Mike Disney, huh? Mike Disney just went oh Mike Mike Disney's on. Tell yeah. him that tell him that we're gonna miss him at ReaperCon. So we were just talking about that. We uh, are gonna miss him. The, yeah, Husky Boys. Him, yeah, tell him to tune in Sunday morning for the Husky Boys. Yeah, yeah, he'll be there in spirit. I'll try to channel. I mean, I won't be a part of it either. So, yeah, we'll we'll raid Mike Disney. That's a good one. So, hope you guys like this kind of meandering reaper land <laughs> by sorting cards um yeah it's either that or cancel so but this was this was fun i think we could do a lot more like walking around and stuff. Boys taking heavy losses <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we're, we're hemorrhaging hemorrhaging players mike disney just went live sick all right yeah is it the art of Mike Disney or art of Mike Disney? Is it? I think it's it just, just art. Art of Mike Disney. I think it, I think it's just art. Art of it Mike Disney. Like somebody's oh, already doing it. I'm not okay. Good because I'm not signed. I realize now I'm not signed into. Uh, oh, I guess I can't see if we started it or not. We did. Oh, okay. So go ahead and uh, say right. goodbyes. All right, chat. Well, hope you have a good weekend. Um, I'll be doing this all weekend. We'll see you at ReaperCon next week. Um, is there any shows next week, Justin? Because Anne might be traveling, right? Getting I, ready? I think, I don't know what Rhonda's doing. Let's assume not, but if you get a show, you get a show. Yeah, just assume that there's no shows. Uh, we have uh, Reaper House of Vex tonight. So don't forget House of Vex later tonight. Uh, I gotta go finish making swag boxes and hanging out with these guys. So All right. have a good weekend. And, and is back Monday, Quindy says. Okay, perfect. So, nice. There you go. Nice. Yeah, we, we don't even know our own Twitch schedule, so. Hell no. <laughs> All right, see you guys. It's not. We just we just went. We just left, John. Okay. Oh. We're we're gone. We're out. I think so. Yes. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. yeah. What kind of good sandwiches you got? Uh, <laughs>